live now. Well, hello everybody, and hopefully we're live on the interview. It's Judith Holloway here from Tree Frog Properties. So welcome to the interview, and you're in the right place if you're interested in property and want to know more about it, and take the all-important action. Now, this interview is going to be so valuable to you, as you're going to learn some great ways of finding leads. And hopefully, if we've got enough time, I'll be able to perhaps cajole or prod my fabulous speaker into giving some of his live examples too. Finding leads are like the bread and butter of making property work. No leads, no deals. So this particular interview is, we'll, we're actually learning from Andy Haynes today, and he's really successful in constantly getting good quality leads and converting them into deals. And this interview, I'm really looking forward to drilling down into this first area because converting them into deals, I think might just be another interview. So um, perhaps we'll take a rain check on that, Andy. So um, hi, Andy, and welcome to The Hangout. Thank you, Judith, it's good to be with you, thank you. Right, what I want to do now is um, a formal interview of Andy. So, so anybody who doesn't know Andy, he's uh, a dynamic, I can't get my words out this morning, a dyna dynamic award-winning property investor controlling his own valuable property portfolio as well as hosting many events up and down the country and that includes training, coaching, mentoring, others to become successful investors too. And he's got a huge amount of property background behind him and between him and his his wife they've got 30 plus years so that's that's a huge amount to to really take on board he's also got uh, a successful property company called property here which buys and sells property and land and just to make life even more interesting not only has he got that he's a director of two businesses bradley haynes law which is a specialist property business and property accountant here which is a niche bookkeeping service and what i love about andy is that he's been able to build his portfolio consistently through making sure he's got a pipeline of leads flowing to him and this is the strategy we're looking at today because let's face it as i said before no leads no deals so it's about checking whether we've got everything in place for our pipeline to be flowing fast and furious. Now today, or even on the recording, Andy, there might be lots of people watching and listening who may or may not be finding leads to put into their pipeline. So it's now about how can we help them to be even, or you, to help them to be more successful in finding those leads which will hopefully turn into deals. But it's the lead finding that we're actually going into at the moment. So. My first question is, can you walk me through briefly the process that you went through to get where you are today, particularly around the lead finding, okay? Yeah, absolutely. And I've invested thousands of pounds in my training. I went on all sorts of courses. You get really excited when you come away from them. But of course, the magic happens when you start to take action based on the course that you've been trained in. Uh, and everything just seems possible when you come away from the training course. And yet reality sits in when you get down to your desk, you're thinking, oh, my God, what do I do now? Panic. And, and I think the big thing to stray, say is that nothing will happen unless you do go out there and you market for your business. And I actually think as great as it is to train and learn all of these property techniques, you have to train and be good at marketing. And a lot of us think, oh, that's something else that somebody else can do for us. And absolutely, that's right. But you'll have to pay somebody a lot of money if you want to have a marketer working for you full time. So my tips here today are to help you in your property business to actually get your own leads and get good at marketing with some very simple strategies that we can all do. And I think it's fair to say, Judith, here that what I'm talking here about marketing obviously relates to property, but it would relate to any other business that you have. So these are transferable uh, techniques that I want to share with you. And I remember when I first came off those training course, sitting down there thinking, oh my God, I could do an advert and what I do in my advert and I did the simple thing I copied other people's adverts and that was a good way to start I went out there I arranged a, a special deal with my newspaper and Thursday came when my newspaper advert was going to be appearing and I just waited by my phone thinking here it is here it is 
and no calls. And it was just one of those moments where I was a little bit mixed emotion, thinking, actually, I'm quite chuffed because I wouldn't know what to say to them if they did call me. But yeah. the other side of it, I was upset and sad because I did want the phone to ring. I wanted to get on my property ladder. And it taught me lots of great lessons because I realized that just because you've got an advert doesn't mean that somebody will ring you. Mm. And so I had to get good at focusing in as to what it is that will get that phone ringing and so here's the first of my tips you've got to have a business that's open and you've got to want to get people to come into that so um you've got to think first of all about the market where you want to go fishing for these property leads who is your ideal target that you want to approach so many of us will use a leaflet and on that leaflet we'll say i'm looking for you if you're being repossessed i'm looking for you if your you know marriage is uh, splitting up or you're getting divorced i'm looking for you if you've got negative equity or if you're relocating we all list down these things mm -hmm. on those leaflets and to my mind i get why we do that but I think you ought to just focus in on one of those things and become good at it. So let's, for example, say that we're focusing on repossession. If you think about it, you can then put yourself in the shoes of that person who's been repossessed. How would you feel? What would you want to see on a leaflet? What would it that gets you to respond? And that then means that you can have a headline that is very relevant to that one particular person, not simply we buy houses you know that does work but actually it works better if you can really fine tune into something um you know if you were to say something for, along the lines of and i don't want to tell you what to put in your leaf i want you to expand your thinking but something along the lines of you know facing repossession um there is a solution and something like that as a as a headline might get somebody to read the leaflet more and then maybe the photo in that leaflet isn't just simply a house which is what we all stereotypically do, do. Mm -hmm. it's somebody that actually has a nice picture which is the solution that they're looking for something that where they got all the weight off their shoulders and so they're looking at that photo thinking yeah that headline talks to me and that photo talks to me i want to be where that person is i need to give andy a call and so that's the first thing is to really niche down as to the type of area that you want to focus on and then once you've niched down then that means that you can then focus on that person and the way to succeed at this is to have a person in your mind that you're talking to who do you think is that stereotypical person that is likely to be repossessed mm. is it male or is it female what age are they what is their background what is their job why do you think they're in that position of being repossessed and i know there's a whole range of reasons but i want you to try and niche down into one particular type of person and hopefully in your mind have that one person maybe a friend of yours that you can relate this story to that it is them that you thinking is a typical person that might be being repossessed so their certain age there's a certain reason why they might be repossessed and the reason why i want you to do this is that then you can talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody what words would you say to that person that would really talk to them you know how would you engage with them and then that should become the words you put in your copy on that leaflet and by doing that then you'll find that people will really just gel it's like magic they're thinking wow it's as if this leaflet's written especially for me and of course it is because you've got them in your mind's eye now people don't like to do this because they think well what about all the others you know why don't i just do a general advert and that catches everybody but the whole point is this that your market isn't everybody your part your market is one specific person at a time and so by niching in and actually using the words relevant to that particular person then it's going to work for you so once you know who your market is you then need to work out my second tip is to get the right message and let me just say uh, just to change tack a little bit let's just say you're looking for uh, a nurse or a doctor or something like that um, you know we can use various words in that advert that would talk to a nurse you know and, and a nurse um, you know using just stereotypical words I wouldn't put these in my advert but if I was to talk about you know the word sick a nurse would understand what the word sick means if I was to talk about the word uh, stable they understand patients in a stable condition all those kinds of things and if I focus on a nurse in that way using those words she would get what I was saying but of course, if I just use those words generally in any old advert, trying to get anyone on board, and I use the word sick, I might attract a nurse, or I might attract a youngster that thinks it's wicked and cool, because that's what they say, hey, that's sick, man, you know, meaning something completely different to what I want to get across in my message. 
And let's just say I'm talking about a stable. Maybe if you're a, a great fan of horse riding and you're out there wearing your jodhpurs all day long, I'm talking about stables, then actually to you is where your horse lives. You know, so it seems so obvious when I'm saying this, and maybe I'm going to extremes, but the word choice that you use in your advert is very relevant. So mm -hmm. really think about that one person, that avatar that you can focus on. What words would you use with them in that particular person, that age bracket, that really does convey your message to them? So you know who your market is, you know what your message is, and then the next thing you need to focus on is the media that you can use to attract them. Now, I think that if you happen to be going for somebody being repossessed, it's a very difficult market to actually get in front of somebody. And I think a newspaper advert or a leaflet is actually probably the best way to actually go across those. Nobody walks around the street wearing a big badge saying, hey, guess what? I'm being repossessed tomorrow. You know, isn't that a wonderful moment? You know, in fact, it's the opposite of that. And, um, and so I do think that, you know, by getting into somebody's homes, into their hands with the appropriate leaflet or newspaper advert is a good way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you were looking, let's say, to a leaflet or a newspaper advert or some other kinds of media trying to find, let's say, tenants for your HMO, and let's go back to my analogy of using a nurse or a doctor, then actually, um, where could you look to attract a nurse or a doctor? Would sending a leaflet out to various homes in that area attract nurses? And I think probably not. It might work, but it's probably not going to. So I would think more outside the box and maybe... Um, I could put a post on Facebook saying, hey, I've got a wonderful home this close to the hospital that really is going to help a nurse or doctor live close to where they're working. It's a safe area. It's on a bus route. It's easy to get there. And guess what? Because I know you work shifts. This is specially laid out for you with uh, with curtains, a blackout uh, curtains. That means you're going to get a special night's sleep during the day because it will seem as if it's nighttime. There's words you can use in the advert, let's say on social media, that would attract them. Mm. Or maybe you could think differently, use a different kind of media, and you could go to a local nursing agency and say, look, I'm sure you get loads of nurses coming into this local area. They want to work at the XYZ hospital just up the road. I've got a wonderful place for them to live. Would you mind if I give you some leaflets so that you can actually point them in my direction? They can come and have a look around. And once you've got a foot in the door, then those same nurses can then put your leaflets up in the in the uh, the restroom at, at the uh, hospital, you know, where they go and hang out and have their lunch, that kind of thing on the notice board there and then you'll attract more nurses you know so you really can think outside the box you don't have to go the typical route of newspapers leaflets postcards if you don't want to think differently so once you know who your market is and then you'll use the most appropriate words to get the message across to people and then you're posting that message in the right place then actually you will get a lot of people coming to you in the right way it'll be less than you would have got as a general advert but i promise you there'll be a better quality of person so then Therefore, you're using your time wisely to get and speak with the right people that you can do business with. Fun. That was absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I was busy scribbling because, again, you know, you've given three, three incredibly tight areas around the particular leads that you are looking at and to be so specific. And as you said, I think it's really important, although you might not get as many, because they are fewer, they are quality leads rather than just the general stuff. So that is that is really amazing. You know, I've I've scribbled so many notes here whilst you've been talking. So um, yeah, focus on one thing and do that really well. <laughs> That's my message, absolutely. Now, I can help you then to take that a stage further. Okay. You see, because when you then have, and let's just talk generally about a leaflet, but it could work this on a newspaper advert or something. Um, you can't just have one leaflet out there. You've got to have two. So I'm still talking about using and focusing on the same person, using a similar message, but I might just vary my message a little bit, change the words. I might change the photo on that leaflet, but I'm running two separate leaflet campaigns because the important thing is to test and measure what you're sending out there. Remember I talked earlier about using the words, if you use the word sick and stable, you know, with regards to a nurse, she sees that in one way and a youngster might see the word sick or stable in a different way. So you would be focusing on what you believe are the keywords in the advert, but by having a change of words in your advert aimed at your same target market, you know that one of those leaflets will work better than the other one. So what you then do out of your leaflet A and your leaflet B, let's say it's leaflet A that's working the best. You keep leaflet A as it is, and you tweak leaflet B until that starts to get you the better results. 
then oh. when that's working better, you then keep leaflet B, and then you go back to tweaking leaflet A and get that to work better for you. Then once leaflet A is working better, you then go back to tweak leaflet B. So you then eventually will get to the stage where both leaflet A and B are generating the same number of leads. Then you know you've got that cream. Then you know that your message is really relevant, really talking to your target market. And you know, you just then got to make hay while the sun shines. So do go out there, test a measure. You know, don't expect to get it right the first time. Run two different adverts, whether that's two leaflets or two newspaper adverts and just go out there and actually test and measure all the time and don't be afraid to actually dabble with the leaflet that's not working to, to get it better than the other one and keep changing things. I think that's really solid advice because again it's not until you start testing and measuring them that you realize how effective or ineffective those particular strategies might be. So what I want to do now is because you're, you're potentially getting some leads coming through um, from these one or two leaflets. So what do you do in terms of keeping all this information? Because you know you don't want to have an untidy situation where you, whereby you've got things scribbled down on pieces of paper. So how do you make sure that you are smack bang up to date with all the leads that are coming in? That's a very good question, to be honest with you. And I think it depends how far you are on your journey. I do get the fact that when we're first starting, you know, money's important to us. I'd much rather say to you spend it on advertising and marketing to bring people in. And, and that's the first thing you'll see lots of big companies that might be struggling. The first thing they do is to get rid of their sales force and think, well, you know, they're not bringing in the lead. So therefore, we'll get rid of our sales force and we'll just manage the people that we've got. That's the worst thing you can be doing. You need to be expanding and spending more money on your marketing. Therefore, that might mean you're bringing more salespeople to go out there and you may be cut back on the admin staff, the backroom staff, because you need the leads coming in. And so if you're new to property investing, my big thing to you is you need to find a budget to actually go out there and start marketing. And Judith's question about how then should you keep those leads, I think I would very much say to you, keep them on a spreadsheet or very simply, uh, what I was taught to do when I first started was I got a concertina file. And that concertina file was one of those boxes where, you know, it's numbered one to 31. And what I would do is I would simply use a piece of paper and I would write down that person's name and address and what the property is and what we talked about. And, you know, any relevant notes would go there and I'd want to follow them up in a month's time. So today's date being um, the 15th, I then would then put that in number 15 on my concertina file and come back to that in a month's time. So on number 15, when I get to 15th of July, I would then take that out of the box and I would then follow up on those people that, um, you know, I spoke to a month ago, see if I can move things on again. I might ring them up. I might send them a simple text. I, and I like texting, if I'm honest with you especially if your market is somebody who's being repossessed. You know, very often people in that difficult position where money is very tight, they get all sorts of phone calls, people ringing them up saying, when are you going to pay this? When are you going to pay that? They won't take phone calls, but a text will get to them. And to send a simple text saying, hey, it's Andy. I spoke to you a few days ago. Just want to make sure you're okay. Anything else I can do to help you? Just remember, this is my phone number. I'm here to do whatever I can to assist you. The chances are they will ring you back because you've sent a text. That's very relevant. You know, but not everyone. Perhaps you can ring somebody up and actually talk to them and say, how did you get on? I know you were looking to speak to an um, estate agent. How did you get on speaking to them? Did they value the house? You know, have you had any viewings yet? How are things going? Just keep in touch with people on a regular basis. And I think monthly is how we do it. So I'd very much keep to a tight budget. No, don't spend any big money on marketing, as in keeping those leaflets in a database, anything other than a concertina file when you're first starting. And then you'll want to progress over time. There are things you can do. MailChimp, for example, is a wonderful database, and that's free to use as well, up to a certain number of uh, people that you've put into there. Um, it takes a little bit of understanding, but there's wonderful lessons you can learn on YouTube. Just simply type in there, how do I use MailChimp? And you'll get free lessons online, so how to use MailChimp, how to set it up, and those kinds of things. So all of this is for free. And then ultimately, you'll want to perhaps move on to, you know, sort of what I call the sort of super duper system. And we actually use a system called Infusionsoft, mm -hmm. which is very clever. And, um, you know, it's very interactive. And, and I don't want to go into too much detail on it, but let's just say why you might want to aspire to it later. In that, for example, if you want to do a marketing campaign with somebody and I want to go to you and send you an email, my system will tell me if you open that email or not. And so if you didn't open it, I then can program it to send you a second email to say, hey, you might have missed this email the first time round. I got some great news for you. So you would open it. 
So that's the one message. But if it knows you did open the first one, it will send you a completely different message to say, how did you get on reading that information? Can we help you any more? And then if you then watch a video I might have put on that email, it will then say, another email sending something completely different so you can program it in a much cleverer way i'm just trying to give you a vision as to what you can do down the road i would say to you when you're starting don't get involved in that side of it that's far too involved save your money spend it on marketing rather than on uh, you know things to as a database a simple sheet of paper works really really well and just be uh, processed to put it into a concertina file follow up once a month and you'll get great leads from that Wow, that's fantastic. Thank you. And yeah, MailChimp is, is very good to use, but yes, it can be a bit confusing. And again, that's got the facility that you can still look to see who's opened it and who hasn't. But yeah, I totally agree when, you know, if you're first starting out or you want a simple life, just to use a concertina file to make sure that everything is where it should. And I think the key thing for me that has come out of that little bit that you've been speaking about is and I've scribbled it down and well two things actually the first thing is to to work on a tight budget and the second thing is to follow up because I think when you follow up consistently you still build those relationships and there could still be a potential lead following into a deal so I think that is really important now what I'd like to ask now, Andy, is because you've been talking about leafleting is as one way of getting very attractive, very focused leads. Are there any other ways, creative ways, or any other ways that you've actually used your lead building skills in, in order to get other leads apart from the leafleting part? Well, you might guess I'm a bit passionate about marketing. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and I've got about 88 ways that, uh, that we can actually get it. Now, some of them are relevant to property investing. Some of them might work better for other businesses. But there are loads of ways that you can get your message out. And I haven't got time to go through all 88 of those. Uh, in fact, we do do day courses to help you go into more depth if, if that's of any interest to people. But one of the other things I think you can definitely do, uh, leaflets, newspaper adverts, postcards, another great idea, where you can simply go to a local post office or local uh, corner store where you can put something up in in their window it might cost you a few pence maybe a pound a week or whatever it is but to write a postcard is great saying your message on there getting people to contact you and you know that is a very low priced way of doing it but one other way that I want to uh, talk to you about is business cards if that's okay and I don't know whether this uh, comes up on the screen but I've got various business cards and as a property investor can you just, I Hang on a minute. Can you just that? Yet yeah, perfect. That now, yes. So that's my business card, and as you can see, it's got my photo on it. Now, it doesn't mean that you know some of us don't look good, and we all get embarrassed about looking at our photo. But actually, I love having a photo on my business card because people will gather they're in lots of business cards and some of those people on there may have the same uh, name that, that you've got and though there's loads of Andys out there I want them to remember it's me so one thing I do on my business card is I do show my photo so hopefully they'll think oh yeah that's the guy that I want to connect with um, I do put then a special tracking phone number on there and that phone number is very relevant because I know that has come from my business card my leaflet that I talked about earlier has a separate number on it and my newspaper advert will have a different number again on there so I'll come back to talk about tracking numbers again in a few moments that's okay yes. Judith. I just want to plant that seed with people but to go back to business cards I have then a business card here which is very relevant for people mm -hmm. that are on their property journey. that's my property investors card if I'm talking to you though because you are uh, somebody that is motivated to sell your house for a low price I've got a separate card for you which Can tells you? people I'm a property problem solver so yeah. therefore on there it has the phrase at the top is that it says I I help people who need to sell their property quickly and it goes on there again with a different tracking phone number on there and that's very relevant to you if you want to sell your house quickly and importantly on the reverse side of that I've then got some very clear messages we can't I can't see okay and yeah. I'll, I'll read out if I turn it around I'll read out to you but I want to just show you on the back it says at the bottom that um, I've got a one thousand pound referral fee now we all know why I put that on there because that wants to help people to motivate them to contact me but I has then put on there a testimonial if you think about it if you're this card will go out to you perhaps if you're being repossessed or something and you need to sell your house quickly you want to know that this card is in the right hands and I've got a, a testimonial on the back here from somebody that I've helped and he wrote to me I didn't ask him this he wrote this email to me and he said it was so good to talk our problem over with you I feel a weight has been lifted already from our present predicament. Yeah. 
Now, if you had my card, you've just met me, am I the right person to speak with or not? And then you get to read a testimonial like that from somebody else. Might you then just think, actually, I've got the right person? So there's lots you can do with your marketing and a business card is a great way to do it, um, to actually make people want to do business with you. And I've then got a separate business card then for the other business you talk about. That happens to be the one where I'm a director of a law firm where we do lots of property conveyancing and option agreements, that kind of thing. And I'm a director on that card. Now, being a director is relevant to a law firm. Being a property problem solver is relevant on that one. And actually being a property investor is more relevant to us if you're in our meeting up with you at a, at a networking meeting. So cards are really to a penny. You know, don't be frightened to have several different business cards mm. for whatever condition you're wanting to be in and actually use them appropriately for that. They're meant to be sort of thrown away almost, give out to people quite liberally. You never know where you'll get your next business from. But the way to track it is by putting those separate phone numbers on there. Yeah. Wow. wow. That, that, that was brilliant, brilliant. because um, it's such a simple thing to do once you've drilled down into where your target market is and the possible choices of words that they want to hear. Um, and just really set yourself up with two, maybe three different sets of business cards that you are tailor making to your potential lead market. And it takes it, us back to where we started. Remember, we talked about our market, yeah. what's the message, and what's the media. So I'm thinking about the media of business cards. I'm aiming my business card specifically at that market, and I'm using the message that I think is a pre is um, appropriate to them. So mm -hmm. my motivated seller card will say property problem solver. It will give a testimonial of somebody that I've helped. My business card, which I might give out to property investors, then has a different phrase on it. It's a, it's a testimonial from somebody that I've helped in their property journey. And so that is then very relevant to that person. So I'm sort of living by what we've said earlier on this recording about market message media. Oh, absolutely. That is that is totally true. Um, you are living and breathing what you're saying. So I'm very conscious of time. Um, what I'd like to do now, Andy, and thank you for being so really full in your descriptions. And it's literally almost step by step by step, which is fantastic. Thank you for that. Now, the last question and uh, a short tip, if I may. What's the one thing you know, we've, we've talked extensively, you've talked extensively about, you know, marketing to get leads. But is there anything else, you know, another one thing that has helped you build this fast flowing pipeline? Because as I mentioned before, no leads, no deals. Yeah, the one tip that I'd like to give to you is actually something that some of us think is so wishy-washy and oh my God, there they go, talk about the same thing again. You've got to be passionate about it. OK, and you've got to have a real big, massive, fat, hairy goal as to why you're doing it. Some of us don't like the word goals. We might want to set intentions or aspirations. You put in whatever word you want it to be. But we all know what I'm talking about here. You've got to have something that floats your boat, something that gives you fire in your belly, something that gets you out of bed on the morning, something that keeps you up at night. Probably you can't sleep. You're so excited about wanting to move you on your journey. And for many of us, that special something is about other people and wanting to help them. And a lot of us are people, people, uh, people, people. Yeah. And so we want to go out there and help others. And I get that. But here I'm talking about doing something completely different. You've got to be totally selfish in your reasons why. Um, and, and I could talk here about me and my wife, Karen, if that's OK, because it's yes. relevant to being us. You know, but you just went, of course, I want the best for Karen, I want the best for our children. I want to go out there and help so many people. It's untrue. But let's just take the silly analogy, if that's okay, for want of getting across what I'm trying to explain here, Judith. Mm -hmm. You yeah. imagine if I'm doing everything for Karen, and you know she's my real reason why, as of course she is, and we're out there making things happen, and then Karen and I, for whatever reason, have a real up and a downer, as all married couples do at some stage in our life. What's happened to my goal and my dream? You know, if I'm saying, well, blow you, Karen, if that's how you feel, I've lost all of my goal and my vision. And, and, you know, I know obviously we soon get back on that and we're still friends again, you know, after that. But you understand the analogy that if you're not focused on something that's very selfish, then actually you're going to lose your dream if you're not careful. If you imagine that I'm totally selfish and I'm focused on the things that are relevant for me and I get everything I want and I make a success of things, guess who I spend my money on? Karen. On Karen and the, the children. children. 
And so they all benefit from that. So if you understand what I'm trying to say, it's the one and only time that I think is fantastic to be totally selfish. So please go and think about, and it may be that you take yourself into, into a room, and a lot of us have got those dreams and goals, but they're probably buried deep down inside of us because they're pipe dreams. So many people along our, our lives have said, oh yeah, here you go again, dreaming once more. And we almost get laughed at. And I want you to actually think about that. And so go somewhere quiet, really focus on those people that you know, have laughed at you almost and rejuvenate those, those dreams and visions to say, actually, it's not so silly. And Andy's given me permission to think about them and go out there and then not only think about them, but want you then to put a bit more meat on the bone. I want you to actually think about how you can really get those to happen. Having a dream and a vision is really going to be that thing that will then get you out of bed on the morning to go out there and make all this happen. And then once you've got that fire in the belly, how are you going to do it? Well, mark it. You're going to focus on, remember that clear avatar, that person you're aiming it at. What message can you give to them? And then what medium can you talk to them in? And that really will help you. And if you're struggling with money, then you need to spend your money on marketing. Business cards are very cheap. Leaflets are not very expensive. And actually, newspaper adverts, you can negotiate a great deal. Now, go to the newspaper and don't just put one or two adverts in there because that's not going to work. Lots of people will need to see you in that advert. And remember, we're running two adverts, A and B. We want to test and measure. Mm. What we want to do is to go in that advert, in that newspaper. And what I would suggest to you is you go in at least six months. But I would go to your newspaper and say, how much would it be to give me an advert in that newspaper? And they'll give you a price. And then say, okay, what if I then go in there for a whole month? I'll have four weeks worth of adverts. Could you get the price down a bit? Okay, what if I now go for six months? Could you get the price down even more? And what if I then consider I'll go there for a whole year? Can I get you know an even cheaper price? You can get it very, very low. Mm. You've got to be out there in the marketplace. And you know, you've got to put it there. So I would say to you, save your money, put it into adverts, really get your name out there. And it's like a boat on the waters. Keep the sail up because if the wind blows and the lead comes along and they look at the newspaper advert that particular week, you will catch the wind. You'll be the person getting the call and you'll be the one that will be getting that property lead that you can do something with. Oh, that's fantastic. And I like your analogy about the, the boat um, because it, it, it can't be prepared, it? I don't know. Can you hear an echo? I can hear a slight echo. Okay. Right, hopefully it's gone now. I think that was sort of like a lag because uh, we're running live at the moment. But yeah, I, th I think what you actually said about um, being selfish, because again, if it's something for you and you're really passionate about it, then the rest of the family, even though the family are involved in it, actually get the positive side of it as well. And I think that is so important. You've got to give yourself permission to be selfish. And sometimes, you know, as, as family oriented people, we do put other people first. So now it's time to be totally selfish. What a, thank you for that, Andy. That was fantastic. What I'd like to do now is to sort of, you know, finish off with um, sort of <clears throat> a, a, a tip. A, well, yeah, top tip is it's. it's because property can be incredibly frustrating, it can be exhilarating, it can be also, it can be polar extremes in other words. So really, what is your best chill pill that consistently works for you? So, because sometimes you can get really het up with, with stuff that's happening. Or, or you can do both briefly if you want, your best motivator, because again, sometimes because of what happens in property, you can feel despondent. So what is your best motivator? that works for you, that gets you back on track. So it's either a chill pill or a motivator. Okay. Yeah, I think that property investing actually can be very lonely. You know, we're out there in our own individual separate businesses. And, you know, sometimes you're out there making it happen. As you say, you're tearing your hair out sometimes. You do get down times. Um, I think it's important the circle of friends that you mix with. That's very, very important. Um, you know, I do get down days, believe it or not. I know that I may always appear to be up, but I've then got a circle of friends that I can just send a simple message to and or make a phone call to them. And, you know, they really just, they get me, they understand me, they know what I'm focusing on, they help to lift me up. That's important. It can though be a simple thing like just going for a walk. I very often will say to Karen, you know what? I'm going to go out there for a walk around the block and I just need to talk things through in my own head, talking to myself. And everyone says, what? You talk to yourself. What happens when you talk to yourself, Andy? That's got to be a side of madness, isn't it? But no, I find that talking to myself actually helps me to think things through. And, you know, we have those two little dogs on our shoulder, the good dog and the bad dog. And you've got to try and control 
you know, whether you listen to the good dog or the bad dog. And we all get it, you know, and we all have those little voices in our head. And, you know, you've just got to then um, make sure you're listening to the right dog on whichever shoulder it's on. So for me, it's a simple walk around the block, get some fresh air. That really helps me. Doing something completely different away from property. Um, then, you know, might be going for a swim or going for a run or going, you know, watching a little bit of television I've re recorded or something like that. I don't watch a lot of telly, but there are certain programs that I will tape. And of course, with iPlayer or ITV Play today, you can go and find some great programs on there that just a wind down time. So then you can come back to the problem that you were facing before with a clearer head and you'll see it in a completely different light um, so mix with the right people go and take a little bit of fresh air that will always help um, go into networking meetings I think helps and this is a whole new topic that we can talk about but I just want to touch on it lightly when you go to a network meeting it's important to go along then if you've got a problem on your mind why not take that problem along and say to people I'm struggling with this at the moment what would you do and you might get 10 or 50 or 20 different answers but there'll be one of those answers that is appropriate for you and really will be the way that you can move things forward as well. So there are lots of ways that you can help it. But the biggest way, I think, is to have your favorite music. What is it that you can just simply go there, put a YouTube track on or go to your iPhone or wherever it is and just play something that really talks to you and actually gets you motivated, gets you back up there again, realizing that everything is going to be OK, that you can do it. Realize that, you know, if life was a full total high, wouldn't it be so boring? You can only measure the highs by knowing, knowing and enjoying the lows, really. I know it's a strange thing to say, enjoy the lows, but you know, you've, you can only enjoy the highs by having the lows. And so know that it's only temporary, it will pass. There is a solution. You just need to go out there and find it. Oh, that was, that was fantastic. Thank you. And again, I think, you know, the, the way that you've, you've talked about, you know, how to get those leads has been fantastic. It's, it's been really powerful and you know there's been huge takeaways and I hope the people watching live or on the recording also get a huge amount of takeaways too so is there anything just very briefly that you'd like to add to to finish off that you may have missed yeah I just want to say to you take action so many of us know what we want to do and it doesn't matter whether you get things wrong you will get things wrong understand that we all get things wrong but you will get a lot of things right and and by getting things wrong you then know the right thing to do because it's the opposite of the wrong thing if that makes sense yeah. and so many of us don't go out there and take action because we're frightened of getting things wrong just know you will get some things wrong it's okay to then know you got it wrong and change your mind and do the opposite and go out there and take action learn from the mistakes and go out there it will happen for you if you take action and you persevere it will come right i can't tell you whether that will be in one day or one week or one month or one year but if you truly want to make it happen and you know why you're focusing on making it happen those dreams those aspirations those intentions once you clearly know what it is just focus on it take action persevere and you will get there i promise you no that's fantastic and it's all about action taking and you know, what I felt through this is that, you know, there are very simple and yet very effective ways in which you can bring leads in. It doesn't have to be high tech at all. And I think sometimes some people, if they're just starting out, um, are quite put off by the, the sort of the technology side of it. So this is something that they can do easily and simply and, and get the leads coming in through whether it's newspapers, business cards, whatever. And... I think the other thing that is really important is focusing on the area that you want to, to work in because, you know, as you said, you can be putting out general stuff and getting lots of leads in, but then not exactly the right leads. But once you drill down and you really focus on what it is you want to do and the area that you want to, to work in, then the quality leads are not huge, but you are getting the quality leads and from that, hopefully the deals. So. I think you have provided a huge wealth of experience and background and energy and positivity and lots more besides. So I want to thank you so much because it's been an incredibly informative interview. And I hope the people watching on the recording as well will take that all important action because, as you just said, action is really important. So thank you for that, Andy. It's great spending time with you, Judith. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, thanks once again, and I'll speak with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.